Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video and a new episode of Android Basics. In this video, I will talk about broadcasts and broadcast receivers. Coming straight to the point, what is the broadcast in Android? It is comparable to what I covered in the last video when, when I talked about intents, just that we don't send this intent, this intention we have to only one app, but to potentially many apps. And also the apps that receive such a broadcast will rather silently handle it and not open an activity, for example. So in short, broadcasts are just system-wide events your app can actually consume and receive. This can either be sent by the Android system itself or also by your apps or also by other apps. And your app can then register a so-called broadcast receiver, which gets triggered when such a broadcast is received. So an example for such a broadcast would be when the Android device is fully booted up. What the Android system will then do is it will send a broadcast to all apps that are registered to receive this specific uh, boot completed broadcast so that your app could react to that when the device is booted up to, for example, start synchronizing some data or whatever you want to do. Another example would be if you, for example, have a music player app and then your Android device gets an incoming call. Then your phone calling app could send a broadcast so other apps can react to, to that fact that the user is currently getting a call and your music player app could, for example, pause the playback so that the user can fully accept the call and doesn't hear any music. And before we actually get to sending broadcasts with our own app, I want to show you how we can react to broadcast the Android system sends. And the example I want to show you is simply reacting to when airplane mode is changed. So when the user toggles off airplane mode, we want to react to that in our app. And when it's turned on again, we also want to know that. And luckily, the Android system will send a broadcast in exactly that case when the user toggles airplane mode, because that is obviously something that happens outside of the influence of our app. So our app kind of needs to receive that event that comes from the system. And to receive that, again, we use a so-called broadcast receiver, which is nothing else than just a class. So here in our root package, we can create this airplane mode receiver, for example, and this needs to inherit from broadcast receiver. Every broadcast receiver then needs an on receive function, which is then triggered when the broadcast is fired. And here, let's actually rename these variables, this one to context and this one to intent. Here, you can then have an if check, for example, to check the intent that gets attached to this broadcast. So that is always the case. If you send a broadcast, you again need to define this intention in form of an intent. You can attach data to it, you can attach an action to it. But the whole difference now to the last video where we just mentioned intents in form of from um, starting activities or starting other Android components, the difference now is that this intent now gets delivered to many apps, such as our app here, for example, when the Android system sends the intent when the airplane mode was changed. So we can now check if we're actually dealing with the intent we think we're dealing with by checking if the action is actually equal to intent that action airplane mode changed because that will be the action that uh, the Android system will attach when this happens. And now to actually find out if the user enabled or disabled airplane mode, we can have a variable is turned on and that is equal to settings. That is just something you need to find out by Googling how you um, now get the actual extra or the actual data out of that intent. In this case, it's not even inside of that intent for some reason, but we can retrieve whether the user has actually airplane mode enabled or not. And we get that with settings, global, get, integer, we pass um, a content resolver, we can get that from our context, context.contentResolver. The name of that setting is settings.global.airplane um, mode on. And if that's not equal to zero, that means it's on. If it is zero, it's turned off. So we can then simply yeah, have a print line statement or so saying um, is airplane mode enabled, and then we print is turned on. And right now this won't do anything because we didn't actively register this receiver as such. So what we want to do is we want to go to main activity and here on create, we say register receiver. That is how we register a broadcast receiver inside of our app so that it is active and it will receive such events. So register receiver, we say, um, let's actually have a variable for that, private variable, airplane mode receiver is a new airplane mode receiver we pass that here and we also need to specify an intent filter, which I covered in the last video. So we just specify what kinds of intents our receiver should be able to receive. In this case, that is just an intent filter. And here we can pass the action of the intents we want to be able to receive. 
So simply intend that action airplane mode changed. And it's really important here that you also unregister this receiver when it's not needed anymore. In the case of an activity, that would be in on destroy. So we overwrite on destroy. When the activity is destroyed, we want to unregister this airplane mode receiver again. And if we now launch this on our device, here's our app. Let's open a locket to see our print line statements. Um, so is airplane mode enabled? Is airplane mode enabled? Let's have that active. Check our device. And if we now toggle airplane mode, then we actually get the lock is airplane mode enabled. Now it's true because I just enabled it. If we disable it, we again get a lock this time with false. And now what I didn't mention yet is that the type of broadcast receiver we declared here is a so-called dynamic broadcast receiver. And that simply means we dynamically declare when we need it here with this register receiver function. And we also dynamically unregister it when our app does not need it anymore. However, it should be obvious that this approach will only work as long as our app is actually active. Because if we close our app, then obviously there is no receiver anymore since we unregistered it before. But taking a look at the example I mentioned before that the Android system sends a broadcast when the device is fully booted up, at that point, our app isn't even launched. So how would it receive that broadcast? And for these things, that is the other side of the metal. Those are called static receivers that we need to receive such broadcasts. So static receivers will also be triggered if our app isn't even active or launched. However, there are a lot of restrictions with such static receivers. So there are only a few exceptions for broadcast actions, such as the boot complete one, that are allowed to be declared as static receivers. The reason is simply that it increases battery usage if you have a static receiver, because all apps that declare to receive a specific broadcast, such as the boot completed one, always need to have that little kind of receiver and service in the background that checks or that receives such events. And that is why Android only allows that for these few exceptions of broadcasts or if a broadcast is specifically targeted towards a specific app. So for example, if you specify the exact package name of the app again, you, where you want to send the broadcast to. But if you actually have a broadcast that is not covered by these exceptions, then to declare such a static receiver, you can do this in the manifest file. So not inside of an activity. Um, here you would then just go below activity have a receiver and you would specify the airplane mode uh, receiver. And in here you can then again specify your intent filter just like we did in the last video for the activity. In this case, it's just a broadcast receiver and you specify the types of intents and the action you actually want to receive with that receiver. But just doing this for the airplane mode won't work because that will only work with um, dynamic receivers. So if you have, have a broadcast that fits under these restrictions, you can only do it inside of your app and your app can only receive this broadcast if it is actually active. But if you have such a static receiver, then you don't need this register receiver and unregister receiver function because it's, it just counts for your whole app and it will also trigger when the app is actually closed. But let's also take a look at how we can send broadcasts from our app to another app. And for that, take a look at this different app. So this is now a different code base. I just prepared a little column with a centered button and when we now click this button, we want to send the broadcast to the other app that I showed you previously. And in Android, this is super simple. So if you are inside of an activity, you can just say send broadcast that takes an intent, which you need to attach here. And here we can just attach a custom action for this a custom intent. For example, we say test action, for example. And again, you could, of course, pass some extras to this intent as a data. You could specify an exact package name if you actually want to use the static receivers. Obviously, it's only sent to that specific app. But let's say we want to send this broadcast to all apps that want to receive this test action. Then we're already good with this piece of code. We can move back to our other app to now define our receiver to also receive these test action intents. So let's just create a different receiver for that in our root package called test receiver is again a broadcast receiver. We overwrite on receive and here we can then check if our intent dot action is equal to test action. Then we print received test intent. We then go back to main activity to register this test receiver. We can duplicate this line test receiver, and this would be just a test receiver in this case. Then in here, oh, actually let's duplicate this or copy it, have our test receiver, also register that. This time the intent filter doesn't specify this uh, airplane mode action, 
Instead, it specifies test action. And then down here on destroy, we again unregister that receiver, test receiver, and we can launch this. So this is now the app that receives the broadcast we want to send from our other app that we just coded. If we take a look here in Lockhead um, and we search for test action, or what did I call it? Um, receive test intent, test intent. And I now launch the other app here. So this one where I um, called the send broadcast function, take a look at our emulator. Then we have the send broadcast button. And if I now click this, then you can see our other app receives this. Since it's a test intent, it actually contained this test action. And this is now a reliable way for two apps to communicate with each other. But again, since that is a dynamic receiver, this will only be reliable if your other app, so the receiving app, is actually open. If it's closed, it will only receive these um, broadcasts if the other app, so the app that sends the broadcast, specifically mentions that it wants to send the broadcast to your specific app with that specific package name. So I hope you learned something new. If you did, then definitely leave a subscribe here if you haven't already, because then you will get two more videos every single week about Android development, so you can become an industry-ready Android developer step by step. Have an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye-bye.